Thank you um, and he hello everyone. I uh, don't know you yet. I hope to see you live next time. I first want to ask the one who is hosting this presentation to give me uh, the permission to share uh, my uh, screen, which isn't done yet. So um, I would like to start the presentation okay. then. But uh, in the meantime, I will uh, introduce myself. I am uh, for a long time working uh, at my university as teacher trainer. Uh, I also do a lot of uh, projects uh, and I fell uh, in love with blended learning and flipped classroom learning um, already 10 years ago um, when we did the first um, flipped classroom project for the European, uh, European Commission. Um, and uh, as you would see in my presentation, if I, yes, no, I can share my screen, that's wonderful. Um, so um, I will show you my work. Okay. Now is the, yes, uh, you can see my screen, I think. Good. Then we can start and we are already at the end of the presentation here so that's not what i wanted to do okay so um this was the first uh, can you see my presentation uh, maya yes yes okay that's wonderful yeah, yeah. Uh, these are the the um parts of the world where, where I already introduced blended learning. It's uh, all over the world. And um, the fact that I um, am so eager to tell you everything uh, that I can share with you about it, and surely we, we will share uh, and make it better uh, when we work together, uh, is the fact that it gives so much opportunities to students from um, all over um, the world uh, to learn and to become uh, students at the university um, and to, yeah, to get good results. But I will immediately uh, jump into the presentation now. Um, I would like all the micros uh, to be muted now uh, so that there is no one uh, interfering uh, with any noise with the presentation. Um, I will go at a rather high speed because we have a lot to do in three hours. And I will excuse me beforehand because this will be a rather theoretical presentation and a theoretical part, but you have to go through it um, to start with blended learning uh, and to, uh, to do the other days and to do the training in uh, Slovenia in August. So what I aim is to provide you with knowledge and tools to develop high quality learning pods for blended learning courses in higher education or also in secondary education, if you want. Um, and yeah, everywhere I, um, I train uh, people to use it, um, it goes from an obligation uh, of online learning uh, during Corona times to an opportunity now that is results oriented and to uh, a blended learning way of teaching. So um, it was maybe a hard time during Corona, but we learned a lot uh, about it and uh, could add it to the knowledge we had already beforehand. So now and then I will ask you uh, to uh, do something yourself. And you will also see in my presentation often some quick tips. Um, one of the tips I can give you already, if you are uh, teaching online and you are blending the teaching with face-to-face -face teaching, it is interesting if possible uh, to add sometimes call to actions uh, for the ones who are listening to uh, you to wake them up, to make sure that they are actively uh, listening. Uh, and the second tip is when you uh, ask them to do something and you provide a link, uh, it's good to try to provide it in several ways so that you can make sure that uh, they will see it. So I did it myself. I have uh, provided you with a uh, URL uh, that you can use and a code or uh, a link, but then you have to open the presentation or you can scan this QR code uh, and then you can answer the questions uh, that will be asked there. So grab your uh, smartphone uh, or um, go to uh, your uh, internet browser, um, 
uh, do www.menti.com and use the code uh, 62943164. And I will now open this so that you can vote. Okay, so the first thing I want to ask you is, uh, when did uh, you first start teaching your course uh, or some parts of it online? And you can um, answer more than one option. Uh, Maya, can you uh, be my uh, spokesman and tell if uh, people can see? Yes, I can see that they can see because I can see the answers coming in. That is good. Yeah, I, I will tell you, Lut, if anything is... Yeah, okay, that's good because I don't see the participants anymore. So the nice thing about Mentimeter, which, which is just one of the tools you can use when you want uh, to have direct contact with uh, the participants and the students at your course. Uh, and you can also see uh, how many uh, participants already answered and then ask them, come on, answer. Uh, we are more than 30 people listening, only nine answers. So try to do it. This is also a nice way to, um, uh, to see if your students have everything they need to follow your course. Eh? If they have the ICT uh, tools, the Wi-Fi, etc. Um, we are at 11 now, so let's wait for some more. And you can continue um, at your own pace with the other questions. We can go over it later on. Okay, I will wait till I see 20 answers. So for the moment, what we see that um, more people already uh, taught uh, online uh, some parts of their course um, um, and some did it only for the first time during Corona. Okay, good. So it's almost 50-50 for the first question. I will go to the answers of the next question. And there we have, what do you prefer? Do you um, prefer to teach face-to-face? -face? Do you prefer to teach online? Uh, and do you prefer a mix? And we see that for the moment, the mix is the winning one which is great because blended learning is a mix. Good. Okay, next question. So here uh, is a presentation where you don't see the an answers before I uh, uh, press enter on my computer. And this is another way of asking questions. Uh, uh, what kind of video content do you use for your lessons? We see a lot of YouTube. Uh, self-created also, great. Uh, none at all can also be, I can scroll down to see the other answers. Uh, okay, good. Uh, this is also a way to learn to know, I don't know you, so it's a way to learn to know uh, what you are standing for, what you are doing, what you are using. Thank you. Okay. And then here, um, that is something that I always ask my students uh, at the start of a new uh, session. Uh, what do they prefer? Do they prefer to read online or to read on paper? And there we see a diversity of answers. Um, same, same here, seven uh, or eight and seven now. Um, it's important and interesting to provide uh, content in uh, more than one way. So if people want to read it, um, you can provide them with, um, with, with PDFs or with a book. Uh, if they uh, want to read it on the screen, they can also do it. Okay, and what is blended learning? Uh, we see here video lessons uh, combined with in-class lessons. Uh, students um, have the choice between online and in-class learning and guided individual learning combined, combined with uh, in-class learning. And uh, you can see that uh, the third one is 
really the definition of blended learning. It is guided, it is individual learning, and it is combined with in-class learning. And not at all only video lessons uh, online. That is a very important thing uh, to uh, take into consideration. Uh, blended learning isn't only about video lessons. Good, okay, thank you. We go back to the presentation. And we have the objectives for uh, today. Uh, I always start uh, my sessions with what can we do today? What will we do and uh, what will you learn? Well, I hope you will know very well what blended learning is. Uh, identify the different types of blended learning. Uh, also, um, know the pillars to ensure the success of blended learning for your students. Uh, we will uh, go through some didactical approaches. Uh, we will um, see the Pickrut model and the Bloom taxonomy. Uh, we will, of course, because there is always uh, both of them, the pitfalls and uh, the advantages of blended learning, we will also uh, go through them. Um, we will see what a learning part in a learning management system is uh, versus just e-learning. And at the end of the session, uh, you will use templates to design your first blended learning ID. Good. Because the objective is that we make at the end of the month of August, um, after the training, you are ready to make a student-centered blended learning pod uh, for content uh, from your own subject or a part of it. It uh, doesn't have to be the whole content at once, using different media and all the possibilities of a learning management system. And you will start with an introduction, which we always do. And you will have an example. Uh, clicking on this link, by the way, you will all get this presentation, which is in Canva. So you can click on all the links. You can go through it as many times as you want, and it stays online during the whole project. In the introduction of your course, we will help you to make a good video about yourself where you also tell about to your students what the method is, who you are, what the schedule and the timing of the course will be, what the objectives are, uh, how you will evaluate uh, the uh, learning path and the blended learning course, and how you will communicate. This are or these are the elements that every blended learning course should start with. Uh, we will see later why. And this is um, an example we provided for you uh, from the Polyflip um, project, which is a European project uh, still going on, but uh, running uh, to the end now. Uh, we made um, many courses in a blended learning way uh, for higher education and engineering, but we also um, made a blended learning course, course about blended learning. And in the next two days, you will go through module one and two. Uh, these are the modules that I am explaining now. The learning management system we use is Moodle. There are others, for example, at my university, uh, we use Canvas, uh, not Canva, but Canvas. Good. So uh, in your learning parts, um, when you uh, have uh, made it through the whole uh, course now and the live course in August, uh, you will have a combination of online and live, uh, live classes installed. You will have modules. There will be interactivity. There will be self-evaluation available for the students with tools that Lester, uh, who is also online with us now and who I will introduce later, um, will provide you in August uh, and on Friday with conditionality, with motivation strategies, with performance tracking, we will always be able to see what our students already did and what they didn't do. And with the use of many different media according to your needs, the needs of the students and the possibilities you have. Okay, what is the time schedule? I can be short on that. You all have it in your uh, email, I think. Uh, today we go from one till um, uh, 
four, but that is um, yeah Palestine time for us. It's twelve till three. Um, then you will have individual work. Uh, you will prepare uh, the first idea of your blended learning course. Then you will present it on Thursday and on Friday. We will uh, prepare you for uh, the training in August. The methodology, well, uh, we are doing a blended learning course about blended learning. I'm introducing the blended learning course now, tomorrow and after tomorrow you take it and then you come back online. The only thing that is unfortunate is that we don't have a live um, introduction and session now. Normally it would all be live uh, this, week, uh, this week, but um, it's, we will see each other in August. And then the contact information. Uh, my name is Lut de Jager. Uh, you can uh, call me Lut because I know that de Jager is not so easy to pronounce. And my colleague is Lester Impens, um, and he will be the one who will uh, give you a lot of information on uh, new tools and uh, also um, work together with you on the tools in August and a little bit already in an introduction on Friday. Okay. So this information I give you now is also the information that should be in every blended learning course. Uh, this is what students need to start with it. So you can already see the list here of everything you will have to provide, provide even without, uh, um, without you already started the course. Okay, as I am sure, that it isn't easy uh, because we, uh, no one of us, I think, has as mother tongue English. Uh, we are online, uh, sitting everywhere. I'm sitting in my living room. You are sitting in a classroom or at home or in your office. Um, you can be distracted. Students can also be distracted. So I always provide everything I tell synchronously online. I always provide it also asynchronously on YouTube with an online video. Uh, I also did it for you. So uh, when you have the presentation, um, you can uh, go to the links uh, you will find um, after every part of the presentation. And there uh, you can see uh, the YouTube channel that Lester and me made, uh, where we uh, share and uh, we bring together all the tools, but also all the presentation uh, presentations. And of course, one of the things we will uh, share with you is how to make a channel, how to design thumbnails, how to subtitle uh, your uh, videos, how to, make, how to make sure that there is interaction uh, in between the video. Um, and uh, the, the other tool I use is Canva as a presentation software, because uh, for me, it's very easy. Uh, I can share it with you. Uh, you can even edit it if you get uh, my permission. Um, I can add things, add things afterwards uh, and you can see them immediately. Um, for me, it is a nicer uh, presentation tool than uh, PowerPoint. But uh, because it's yeah, it's more like uh, sharing online things, uh, but that's up to you what you use. We will only inspire you. OK, this was the first part. So um, I will now uh, look and you will see yourself, I think. Yes, if someone has a question already, you can open your micro now and you can ask your question. I will wait for a second. You can also, I, yes, uh, yes. I have a question. Uh, you have talked, uh, like, uh, didn't make it maybe not, not clear, not to me, what's the difference between flipped classroom and blended? Are oh. all flipped classrooms blended yeah, or okay. not? Or does this one lead to other or not? Yeah, thank you, Isam. Uh, this is uh, something that will come now. So, uh, the introduction was uh, only about what will we do today. And uh, I think within half an hour, you will have an answer to your question. Is that okay? Sure, sure, I will okay. wait. <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. Good. 
Before we start blending our learning, we have some considerations to make, and that will be my next slide, if okay. The first consideration we have to make is how do we like to teach and how are we teaching at the moment? Because blended learning, as we will see later, is a mix of the strategies we already use together with flipped classroom. So blended learning, you could say, is like an umbrella getting over um, flipped classroom and over online learning and the teaching strategies that you already use. Um, so I have again a question for you. Um, can you tell me uh, which teaching strategies you use already now? Uh. So you have again, oh, I will uh, share the, um, the QR code and uh, the code again, so that you can see um, the link to uh, the next voting. And once you are in, I will share the answers with you. Is it working for everyone? Is the code not working? No, the code worked for me. Ah, okay, good. Yes. So I will open this and start my presentation. Good. Okay. There we go. Ah, we already have answers. Okay. So from the 15 people who answered, uh, during the pandemic, uh, most of you were synchronously, as I am doing now, teaching online or using a mix of video lessons or other learning materials. Asynchronic was apparently not used so much. Good. And then how do you teach now? We see 47%, 44% because it's still changing, live in class teaching only, a mix. And then we have a mix of uh, in-class learning and individual online learning. No one is uh, using video lesson of the respondents is uh, using video lessons only. Okay. And then um, we can see here how uh, you um, uh, organize your lesson. Uh, do you first ask the students to do something uh, by, their, by themselves uh, online and then they come to the class? Or do you teach and then ask them to learn online at home and individual on, at home? Or do you... Um, ask them to learn something online, then they come to class, and then you continue with an online session. Uh, we have, um, I think the, the um, number two for the moment is winning. Yeah. You see that Mentimeter uses different styles of uh, asking questions. Um, of being interactive. Yeah, the type two is the one you mostly use that is the most traditional one and you teach in class and then uh, they can uh, do their homework, uh, train themselves, learn things at home. Okay, good. And then which of these learning materials do you use for your courses? Uh, Self-recorded video lessons, handbook or printed, printable PDFs, and then uh, existing video lessons, YouTube or 
other channels. Uh, very interesting information for us. Uh, it's also important for Lester and me uh, for the training we will give in August to see these results. Thank you very much. Okay, it's still changing a little bit. Okay, good. We see that um, Again, we can say that that half of you use handbooks and uh, printable PDFs, and the other um, half of you is using videos, self-recorded, uh, and existing videos. Interesting. Okay, thank you so much. Lut, can I? Can I? Uh, Sometimes uh, the old choices uh, we use, I mean, not not uh, one of uh, one of choices like uh, self-recording videos, plus uh, the printable PDFs, plus because because uh, we have mixed uh, now, we have mixed up approaches yes. now. Then that make make uh, some of us not. Um, not respond or not submit his answer because uh, we 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 and we stop asking ourselves. We use all the four the four choices. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. So I um, I have to change the uh, question next time and uh, make uh, possible to give. Um, more than one answer so multiple answers you can do that with mentimeter uh i think i didn't do it here because i really wanted to know uh what would be the first um choice you make uh what's the most important for you but then of course that's what you get um, um, um it spread it all over the answers um for us it's interesting for example if you uh use existing video lessons um less than me will uh show you how to install uh, interactivity uh, in um, videos that already exist and also auto description with uh, artificial intelligence etc um, but uh, uh, as you use almost everything uh, we will uh, our session about um, video and video editing etc uh, will um, have many tools that you can use Okay, nice. Thank you very much. Good. Last one. Uh, how do you rank from uh, most to less used the learning resources um, you provide for your students? The first is paper course and handbook. Then we have existing video lessons, then printable courses, and then uh, self-recorded uh, video lessons. I have to say, this is everywhere I ask it, in every country, always the same. Always the first is the paper course and the handbook still stays so strong. Uh, then uh, existing uh, video lessons. Uh, then sometimes we have first, um, um, we have an exchange there, printable courses and then existing uh, video lessons. And then uh, at the fourth place, self-recorded video lessons. Good. Thank you. We go back to the presentation now. Okay, so good. So if I um, come to uh, um, an answer, um, an overview of your answers, you are teaching face to face, you are teaching from a distance, you are teaching synchronously online, not so much teaching asynchronic, um, asynchronous, though you have YouTube videos so uh, the students can watch them. Uh, um, at their own pace. Uh, we are now um, not teaching in a hybrid way. Uh, we do it a lot in our university. And I have to admit, for me, that is the most difficult one. Uh, when some of the students are in class and others follow from home, it is, in my opinion, not so easy uh, to uh, make sure that everyone stays involved in the course. Uh, sometimes um, the ones who are at home uh, don't hear uh, the answers of the others. We need very good micros, team micros, and even a system where the camera is following the teacher. So in my opinion, the hybrid version of teaching is uh, techni technolo uh, um, when you think at the technology, the most difficult, um, that's, that's my personal um, um, idea about it. Maybe you have other uh, experiences with it. And then we have also flipped, and some of you already do it, 
flipped where you first uh, ask the student to do something at home. Uh, then come to class and in class, they learn into depth. They are all at the same level uh, when they come to class. Uh, they can exercise, they can present, they can share their knowledge, they can learn from their peers. And you as a teacher can spend all your time uh, to um, go deeper into uh, the um, teaching you want to do and the content you want to provide them with. Learning media. We have, as we saw, the written and printable content and the visual and auditive digital content. Uh, also from the Mentimeter uh, responses came the same, um, yeah, the same uh, things as learning media. Good. Which approach do we use for blended learning? We now know how we teach, but what do we do with blended learning? We have to go through some different elements. We have to go to the uh, approach in a content-wise way, didactical, pedagogical, and practical. Here I explain them, and you can ask it by asking yourself questions content-wise, how will you organize the content? What will be the part of the content that the students can learn at their own pace and individually? And what should you teach them in class? Uh, didactically, how will you use the method? Will you use the, the pure form? Um, how, uh, what will be the percentage of the online teaching and the face-to-face -face teaching? That is the second question you have to ask yourself. Then how can you make in a pedagogical way um, sure that the students um, succeed in the learning and they find the learning attractive and your teaching attractive? And then what is needed uh, to make it doable for yourself and for the students and also feasible for yourself? So these are questions we all have to ask and we will ask ourselves um, to uh, make sure that we know how we will blend our course and make it uh, possible to blend it for us and for the students. And now we come to what is blended learning. Well, blended learning is a mix, a mix of, and we go first to uh, the part that you, most of you already know, distance learning and flipped classroom learning. We start with distance learning. And the question you could ask yourself is, why should we not just use distance learning? Maybe that is also possible. What is distance learning? Well, in its purest form, it is uh, no or less than 30% face-to-face lessons. So from the moment, none of your lessons are face-to-face -face or less than 30% is face-to-face, -face, you can say, I am only teaching distance, from a distance, distance learning. What do you use as material, a handbook and online content? What comes out of literature and research, there is a very high chance of dropout. So it isn't really the best idea. One of the examples is learning a language. There are plenty of language courses online that are totally distant from a distance and where you are at your own pace can go through the sections and learn the first lesson, the second, etc. Um, where is it used most for? I already said language, but it can uh, also be used as an introduction or, or, or a teaser for your uh, courses. Uh, we use it um, in uh, our university for lifelong learning, uh, but then very short um, blend, um, distance learning lessons uh, for language lessons, we learn it um, more and more. And since Corona, more often uh, for job application, uh, often uh, there is a distance 
um, application already for uh, a job application, and even the interviews are from a distance. Uh, and then, um, because for many of the things you can study in Belgium, you have to do an entrance examination. Um, you can also uh, test and prepare uh, these uh, competence examinations online. So these are all distance learning um, things that you could learn, uh, could use distance learning for. But I told you the chance of dropout is big. Uh, why? And that is something uh, we already can now uh, take into account also for our courses. Um, it is important that there is a follow-up. Distance learning doesn't have any follow-up normally. There is no personal contact or feedback. You learn the uh, language and you don't see your teacher. You hear a teacher, but you don't see him or know him. Or her. Um, often distance learning is only video. There is no contact with other learners, so no peer contact. And there are no incentives to persist. All these elements can make that students drop out from a distance learning only course, but also from other courses. Other things we could think about, um, students, when they see and watch videos, um, they can't take a long time uh, to look at the video before taking a break. So if you have a long video, it is better to split it in shorter videos. Uh, three to nine minutes, not more. Um, that is uh, something uh, that you can do by really splitting it or by asking questions in between parts of the video. That will already um, more attract their attention than just watching a long video. What is also important, and there uh, we can uh, use AI also uh, to do that, uh, inform your students about the content, give them a good a summary of the video, and also about the duration. How long will it take uh, to watch the whole video? Uh, once they know how long it will take, they know, okay, I can, I can support watching for five minutes for example. Um, add an introduction video to the course and to the teacher. Once they saw you and they know you a little bit, even though they didn't see you face to face, it gives them another way uh, to start the learning and to, um, yeah, to do the learning. And then, and we all have it, if there is a link in a presentation or in a, in a course and it doesn't work, we stop. So avoid that links. Control and test your links every time again to make sure that they are not broken because your students will also stop learning at that moment. How can you reduce it? Well, uh, clear objectives, a time shadow, incentives. We will show you how in Moodle you can add badges to uh, your courses and your modules uh, how you how you can do a call to action, for example, uh, now and then a Mentimeter uh, question is a call to action, uh, now and then um, um, asking a question or doing something is a call to action, a CTA, we call it. Uh, you can also add online tests um, with feedback after or in between the videos, we will also show you how to do that. And if possible, be available for questions and feedback at certain moments or uh, learn them how to give feedback uh, and answer questions uh, to each other. And of course, uh, when the sound and the images are not, <coughs> it is almost not possible for students to um, maintain their um, their. Um, the learning, they will stop. Uh, if there is a, a background sound that is annoying, uh, if your voice uh, it can, can't be heard very clearly, uh, it isn't nice. Also the background. 
It is important. We will uh, also do that when we will uh, make videos uh, with you. Um, use a simple background. Uh, I think that someone of you um, still has the micro on. So can you switch it off? Can the one who has his micro on switches off, please? Yeah, thank you. Uh, good. Um, the background. Okay, you don't see that I am uh, in my uh, living room now. Uh, I think um, I think you see uh, um, only another screen. Um, it shouldn't always be like that, but the background isn't important as long as this, uh, as it is not becoming too important uh, when uh, there's a lot of things going on in the background or a lot of information in the background that is not necessary for the teaching leave it out and then when you use which we will do our your smartphone uh, to make videos uh, always landscape because the screens are also landscape so don't put it vertically but horizontally good okay next so um, the implications of uh, doing uh, a lot of things that can help your students to uh, learn uh, will be that they will be enthusiastic to use your courses. Uh, but we need a good learning pot to do that. Uh, we have to structure our course very well. Uh, we need a system to manage the learning that will be the learning management system and we will use Moodle. Uh, we will also use Moodle to see uh, the progress and the interaction with our students. We need hard and software and we need to be a little bit ICT knowledge. Okay, second thing we add we add to the distance learning is the face-to-face -face learning. And we can do that, as I already uh, asked you, in different ways. We can ask the students to do something beforehand, to learn something beforehand, to read something beforehand, to exercise, and then come to class to go into that, um, to do lab uh, exercises, to uh, have discussions, uh, can be uh, plenty of things. Secondly, we can uh, ask the students uh, to make exercises um, and learn in class and then uh, go home to do their homework, or we can do a mix of the three. Um, I almost always use the mix of the three. Um, I almost never use anymore the second one, uh, and sometimes I use the first one, and the first one and the last one are flipped classroom. So flipped classroom is an educational technique that consists of two parts, an interactive group learning activity face-to-face -face in class, and then a computer-based individual instruction outside the class. When you do that, that's up to you. Most interesting often is that they already learn something before coming to the classroom so that you as a teacher can use your teaching time in a better way. But what is then blended learning? Well, blended learning is mixing distance learning with flipped classroom learning. You put that in a mixer, you blend it, and you have blended learning. And of course, you need some examples to understand that. Uh, but first I come to the definition. It is very well thought through combination and integration of online and face-to-face -face learning and teaching activities while using a learning pod in a learning management system where you bring into account the context of your institution, uh, of yourself, and of the students. So when you have all this together, you have blended your learning. This doesn't have to look spectacular. It will not look the same for everyone, but it is very uh, thoroughly thought through, and it is a combination and an integration of online and face-to-face -face learning 
in a learning management system with a very well thought through uh, learning part. And you take into consideration every involved uh, person. Good. And it is always, oh, I'm sorry, it is always between 30 and 70% online. So you don't have blended learning courses that are fully online. That is not possible. Here you have some uh, examples. Uh, you can read them. I will uh, not take the time uh, to go over it with you. Um, in our university, all our courses are, um, or parts of our courses are blended. Again, you have a video you can watch to recall and recap uh, at your own pace all uh, what I told you in this um, uh, first or second part of uh, the presentation. Uh, so now uh, we come to the next part and we will start blending. Uh, before we yes, start, right? yes, okay, you have a question. Just uh, ask yes, please. please. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think you've start defining blended learning as distance learning plus flipped classroom. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we we've got three um, terminologies like flipped classroom, flipped learning, and flipped teaching. So yeah. uh, um, I'm sure I think there there is some slight difference at least between uh, or among these three definitions. So uh, could you clarify the exact difference between flipped learning, flipped teaching, and flipped classroom? Because when you say, when we talk about blended learning, that we take the perspective of learning, not teaching. Yeah, it is the perspective of learning and teaching. It, it comes together. So you could say flipped classroom is a class, a course, where a part of the uh, teaching is uh, at a distance, the students do do it themselves, and then they come to the class, and then they uh, get from the teacher extra information, go into depth into the content, etc. So you could say flipped classroom is the methodology. The students are flipped learners; uh, they learn a part of their course themselves, and then come to the classroom, and the teacher is flipped teaching them you see so it's it's all um yeah a, a slightly different um expression of the same thing flipped classroom but does normally the sorry yes? does the pedagogy has some elements in this difference um no I mean, the, the, the pedagogical part of the whole teaching and learning process, does, does it have an impact on the exact meaning of these terms? No, uh, you can, you can, these are terms. So the, the learners learn in a flipped way, the teachers teach in a flipped way, and the course is a flipped classroom course. So there is no difference. Uh, we will, of course, and we come to the four pillars now, see that we have to take into consideration every element um, that will be part of this flipped or blended learning. Uh, if the students don't have, for example, the material uh, to work and the ICT knowledge and the Wi-Fi connection to uh, learn from a distance, or if the institution where you teach doesn't want you uh, to teach in an, um, uh, from a distance and wants you to be all the time at the university, or you as a teacher don't have the knowledge uh, to provide uh, good um, content online, then it can't work. So we will see now that this flipped classroom with flipped learning and flipped teaching uh, has uh, some um, important things uh, that have to be there to make sure that you can do it. And these are the four pillars the four pillars to realize a flipped classroom with teachers who can uh, teach it and students who can use it. Okay, thank you. Is that, thank you. Thank you very much. Are thank there you. other questions? Uh, 
You can always interrupt me or I won't stop talking, I know. Uh, so please interrupt me, no problem. Oh, Good? Uh, yes. Excuse me? Yes. Yeah, thank you for interrupting you. Uh, in my opinion, uh, teaching, uh, it's related to the teacher as facilitator to facilitate the flip teaching. So the actions that the teachers or the role of teachers to facilitate the activities which is belong to the teacher, we called it in uh, our university, uh, flip teaching. Uh, activity related to the students uh, to uh, gain the outcomes we uh, need to uh, our student to gain it in the near future. We called it uh, flip learning, which is related to the student. Okay. Uh, cl classes, uh, flip classes related to the situation or the, the class or the places where these activities and uh, things happen. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. It's very interesting to see it from that perspective. Good. Other uh, persons want to add something or to share something or to ask something? Uh, could you please? Hello. 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 Yes. Uh, for example, for me, if I want to use blended learning, uh, it is uh, I haven't any permission from my university, but yeah. the flip classroom, I have always the permission because uh, the legal said that we are on the class each lecture. Yeah, okay. That is the context, eh? yeah. yeah. And that is interesting. I have to admit that in Belgium, we don't talk anymore about flipped classroom because we have so many um, uh, ways of teaching um, and mixing the ways we teach that we call it with the umbrella term blended learning. So we don't use flipped classroom as a term anymore. So it's very interesting for, for me to see how you uh, really need to make a difference between the learning, the teaching and the flipped classroom itself. And uh, also to see that uh, for some of your uh, institutions, it will be important not to talk about blended learning, but about flipped learning. So that is interesting, but I think uh, if we come now to the four pillars, that some of the things you asked or said will be uh, in this, um, this next uh, part of the presentation. So let's go to that now. We will see what the pillars are to make sure that uh, our students um, uh, successfully learn when they learn in a blended or a flipped way. And where you also as a trainer are satisfied with the way you are teaching. Okay, uh, we have to overthink many things. Do we all have sufficient ICT skills? Do we all have the um, necessary soft and hardware? Is the environment, and that is an interesting question we just heard, ready or open to blended learning or to flipped classroom, uh, classroom learning. So these are all things that are, um, yeah, together, the pillars for success. And here you see them. Uh, you have four pillars and they uh, are uh, making sure that the student will be engaged. You will also find them in our uh, module two of the Moodle course we provide on blended learning. We have four pillars. We have the F for flexible environment, and that is the context. We have the L for the learning culture. We have the I for intentional content, and we have the P from professionalized educators. Okay, the flexible environment. Everyone involved in blended or flipped classroom room learning and teaching should know what this method is and should be uh, believing that this method is a good method 
um, to teach and to learn. So the institutions should also provide time, classes, infrastructure. The educators and the students all have to know about uh, the method and also to be flexible. Uh, when you don't want to change the initial face-to-face -face course you were teaching, um, and you don't want to be flexible and try out other ways of teaching, and the students don't want to try out other ways of learning, and the parents or the environment uh, doesn't want you to do it that way, then it won't work. So the first pillar is the environment, the context. The second one is the learning culture. Um, it is, in my opinion, very important that you know beforehand uh, your students. Uh, do they have special needs? Uh, what do they already know? Can I um, make one course or do I have to uh, uh, introduce differentiation uh, in the first part and all the other parts of my course? How skilled are my students? Um, will, they, um, will they need guidance from me? Um, do I, uh, are they freshmen and is it the first time they learn in such a way or uh, do they already know it? These things are also very important. Um, if the students are thrown into uh, the method of flipped or blended learning without knowing how, why, and um, how to work with it, it won't work. So we have to instruct them very well about the method and if needed, guide them also before starting. The next is the content. Not every content is uh, feasible and, and uh, is, is okay to uh, teach in a blended way. Some things have to be uh, taught in class. Some things can easily be taught just by uh, showing a video or um, asking them to read something. And that is um, very important for you as teachers. Um, what is the best content and what is the best part of the uh, all the subjects you are teaching uh, to teach in a blended and um, a flipped classroom way? Uh, it is important to consider that. Um, so um, sometimes, for example, it's good that they already know beforehand some um, important things about security before coming to the lab and do the experiments or it's important that they all have the same level of knowledge before coming to the classroom, uh, or it could also be that um, when they already know something before they come to the classroom and they know they will first have to present uh, the knowledge they gained, uh, they will work harder. Uh, that's what also Blush was telling us. Uh, his, uh, the way his students are looking as the, uh, at the content he is teaching has changed totally. They are way more motivated. And then the last one is you yourself. Um, are you trained well enough? Do you have time? Uh, do you have the material? Uh, is your subject, uh, do you teach it in a team? Can your team support you? There is so much you have to take into consideration uh, when you want to blend your courses because in the beginning, uh, it will take more time. Uh, after a while, it will take less time, but it can take lots of time. Do I have a question? I hear someone. Um, Akram? Akram, do you have a question? No, okay, good, I continue. So these are the pillars of blended learning. And again, uh, you can also uh, watch the video uh, and then it's time to plan your blended learning process yourself. Uh, and the first thing we have to do there is to ask ourselves, and then now we talk about the teachers, how digital competent are we? Because if we are not digital 
competent or interested, it will take so long uh, before we can um, add, for example, some interactivity to videos, to edit videos, to um, give presentations with uh, interactivity, um, make questions, uh, add badges, etc. Um, for um, um, for asking yourself how digital competent you are, there is. Uh, a shadow, a scheme that is um, uh, worked out by a European project, uh, and that is called the Digital Competence Framework for Education, and it is based on the same uh, framework you also have for uh, language, um, how uh, good you are at um, using a language. Um, the A1 is you only are aware that there is a lot existing, uh, but you don't do anything uh, with it. If I would compare that, for example, now to ChatGPT, you heard about ChatGPT, but it doesn't interest you or you didn't do anything yet with it. Then ChatGPT would give you an A1. Eh? Uh, could be that you are curious and willing to explore the tools or the new uh, AI, then ChatGPT, then you will become an A2 because uh, you don't you say uh, you don't say no, I don't use it. You say hmm, I'm curious. I'm, I'm I want to learn something about it. Uh, you explore it. You have an A2. Then um, if you know how to uh, and you you do it, you use it in a meaningful way and with a lot of variations according to your courses, you integrate it, uh, then you have a B1 knowledge. Um, and um, if you higher your level, your level of using it, and uh, you can um, use it um, as a strategy of learning and teaching, uh, and with many uh, diverse uh, ways of, uh, of uh, using it, you become an expert. You have a B1. Um, if you start thinking, is this okay to use it in that way? Shouldn't I better use it in that way? You become critical and you share your knowledge with others. Then you have a C1 and that is leadership. And of course, if you yourself make it better, then you become an innovator. So uh, this is a scheme you could um, ask yourself uh, where you are for the moment. And I could do that now with uh, Mentimeter again, but I won't do it because uh, I would like to give a little coffee break now, not more than five minutes because we have a lot uh, to do um, um, in the next part, but five minutes coffee break now. That means that um, we will be back at um, 35. So uh, 12.35 for you? No. Uh, what is your hour now? 2 p.m. Two b and uh, 28, oh. about 2.30, yeah. about 2.30. Okay, okay. So uh, 35, we see each other back. Five Thank minutes. you very much for this five minute loop and we are very interested with your uh, presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah.
So are we there again? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Yep. Everyone is there. Yes. I'm sorry for the short break, but uh, yeah, we have some work to do. Um, so I will continue. I hope you enjoy your coffee or tea. I uh, do with mine also. Um, so we come to uh, another part of the uh, presentation. Uh, I think you um, also found the presentation already with a link in your, um, your email. Um, that is also something I always do. My students can also follow at their own pace uh, on another screen if they want. So uh, what we will do now is I will um, um, introduce you to the PCRED uh, model, which is a model I often use. Uh, to overthink myself uh, if the digital technology I am using um, has an impact on my teaching uh, and on uh, the students' learning. Uh, because it's easy to say, okay, we will blend everything or flip everything and do things online and then in class and we will use the newest technology. But you always in my opinion, have to take into con consideration, is it doing something? Is it worth uh, all the uh, work we, um, we add to it or we do for it? Um, and the questions we as teachers can um, ask ourselves is, how does this uh, the use of technology impact our pedagogy? Is it replacing what we did before? Is it amplifying uh, what we did before, or is it really transforming what we did before? And here is like an algorithm you can use for that. You can say, given a particular classroom use of technology, are the achieved learning outcomes of the activity clearly better than they would be, uh, would have been without the technology or via a lower tech solution? If the answer is no, it is not a problem that you use technology instead of what you did before, but you have to realize that it's just a replacement. It is not adding anything more. Um, if it is yes, you have to ask yourself two questions again. Could the activity have reasonably been done without the technology or via a lower tech solution? Um, if it is yes, well, then you are putting something on top of what you already did and you can say it's an amplification. If it is no, you can't do it without this new technology, then you could say it is really, <clears throat> excuse me, a transformation. Is there something better than something else? No. But if everything we do, every um, all the hours we spend using new technologies only to replace what we did, then we have to think, is it worth doing that? So I hope that we have the tree when we come uh, in August with all the tools we will provide you with and you will use to, um, uh, to change uh, your course and to blend your course. I hope you will say, okay, some of them was ju were just replacing, some of them were amplifying, but we also have some that we couldn't do uh, without this new technology. And that is the PICRAT model. Hmm? The PICRAT model is asking uh, how will it change your teaching as a teacher? And also, uh, what will the students do with the technology? Uh, that is the second part. Will they use it just by looking at it passively, just watching a presentation, watching a video, doing nothing else with it? Or will they use it in an interactive way? For example, the video stops uh, at some moment and then uh, they have to answer questions or there is a presentation and they can interact in the presentation with a little chat, uh, chat function or something else. Or in a creative way, can they themselves also make 
with the new technology things that you didn't do as a teacher, then they use it in a creative way. And that together um, brings um, for us as teachers that we can um, carefully think about uh, what do I ask my students to do with all these tools and all this technology I use, using it just by watching, interacting, or co-creating. If you bring that all together, you have the PCRED model. And it's just a model to self-reflect on um, using technology, uh, not only for blended and flipped classroom learning, but in your lessons. Um, I have as a little exercise, uh, and I give you five minutes for that. And in the meantime, you can also drink your coffee. Um, I have here uh, some examples, and I would like you uh, to put them um, at the right place in the, um, in the shadow. For example, is A something you would put here where um, it amplifies um, regarding to traditional practice, uh, the teaching, uh, and for the students, it is something interactive, then you put it here, etc. So uh, grab a piece of paper and put the letters in the sheem, and then we will see so, what the answers are. Okay, maybe we can already um, look at some of the answers. Uh, for example, A, a YouTube video made by the students about a new experiment. The students have created something. And it, yeah, you can say it amplifies my normal teaching. This is not the, the one and only answer. You could have put the answer somewhere else, but it, it are just examples to make you feel what the PCRED model can do as a self-reflecting uh, tool for you. A learning path with differentiation and conditionality that is definitely transforming uh, the way you teach when you just have a face-to-face uh, -face class. And for the students, it is interactive because there is conditionality. So if they don't um, succeed in some exercise, they can't go to the next part of the learning path, etc. So there is also differentiation if they uh, are not yet um, good enough at um, using the content, uh, they have to uh, recap it. C, existing uh, YouTube video with added interactive questions. Uh, that is what we will do also um, with Lester in uh, August. Uh, that is amplifying what you already had, and it is interactive. So we can put it here. Uh, a PowerPoint designed by the students. They made it, so it's creative, but maybe it's just replacing what you had. So could be that you position it uh, it here, that you put it here. E, a PowerPoint with intermediate questions and um, assignments uh, could be a replacement of what you did before in class, but for the students, it is interactive. So we can put it here. Then a PowerPoint to present lesson content designed by the trainer that is definitely only replacing what you had before and it is passive in use for the students. 
it's not bad, but if that's the only thing you use, hmm, you have to self-reflect on it. Then we have YouTube videos with extra demonstration of an experiment done in the class that can amplify what you did before, but for the students, it's only to watch. So there is, it's a passive way of using it. AR to explain security in a lab, where they also feel how it works, will transform your teaching. But you could say if they only watch it uh, through their uh, VR um, um, glasses uh, or in another way, it is passive for them. So it's not because it's artificial intelligence that it has to be here somewhere. No, it can also be here somewhere. Then I have video made by the trainer from an experiment done in class. Hmm. It can replace, it can also amplify, and normally the students will watch it uh, passively, so I put it here. And then discussion forum moderated by the students. Well, definitely, they if they have to moderate it, they have to create content. And for you, it can transform your teaching uh, because um, the students are uh, moderating themselves uh, the questions they have about the lesson content. That's something in a traditional class uh, that would be very difficult to do. So these are just examples to explain the Pekrat model, uh, which is, in my opinion, it's it's um, a model that uh, it's, it's very special. Um, it came up um, some years ago, then it was totally away, and now it's back again uh, due to uh, the use of artificial uh, intelligence. Uh, we are thinking again uh, with the same model and self-reflecting with the same model. What I did, I also uh, transferred this Pickrot model to blended learning uh, because I think we can do and we can ask uh, the same questions about changing our usual way of teaching into a flipped or a blended learning teaching. What are the students doing with the online content and the face-to-face -face content? Are they just passive listeners, interactive uh, users, or creatively creators of content? And how does the use of blended or flipped classroom learning, learning um, and teaching impact the teacher's pedagogy? Does it replace what there was before? Does it amplify or does it transform? Of course, we hope that it's not one answer, but a mix of answers, and that there is also interactivity, creativity, um, that it amplifies and that it transforms the teaching.